hate vegetables, you're not alone. Today we're going to talk about why there are so many people who just hate vegetables. About 20% of the population are super tasters. Super tasters have more taste buds than other people and are super sensitive to the bitter compounds found in some food and drinks, even at low concentrations. If you have inherited super taster genes, then cruciferous vegetables, flower vegetables in the cabbage family, like bok, choy, broccoli, brussels sprouts, cauliflower, radish, swede, turnip, and watercress will taste disgusting. Their bitter taste is due to mustard oils that are produced from a naturally occurring chemical called glucosinolate when the vegetables are cut, chewed, or cooked. This also leads to the release of sulfur molecules, which you can smell during prolonged cooking. Cruciferous vegetables are especially high in glucosinates, and super tasters find these up to 60% more bitter compared to non-tasters. In the general population, about 30% of people are non-tasters, who have no genetic taste aversions to bitter compounds, and the other 50% are between and called medium tasters. Sensitivity to bitter compounds does vary based on age, with children being more sensitive to bitter taste than adults. In fact, people with the bitter gene are 2.6 times more likely to eat fewer vegetables than people who do not have that gene, according to a new study presented Monday at the annual meeting of the American Heart Association. We wanted to know if genetics affected the ability of people who need to eat heart-healthy foods from eating them, said study author Jennifer Smith, a registered nurse who is a postdoc in cardiovascular science at the University of Kentucky School of Medicine. While we didn't see results in gene type for sodium, sugar, or saturated fat, we did see a difference in vegetables, Smith said, adding that people with the gene tasted a ruin your day level of bitterness. The complex sense. Our sense of taste relies on much more than a gene or two. Receptors on our taste buds are primed to respond to five basic flavors, salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami which is a savory flavor created by an amino acid called glutamate. Think of mushrooms, soy sauce, broth, and aged cheeses. But it's also smelling through the mouth and the touch, texture, and temperature of the food. It's very difficult to separate out taste from the rest. So when any of us say the food tastes good, it's a composite sensation that we're reacting to. University of Connecticut professor Valerie Duffy, an expert in the field of food taste, preference, and consumption. Even our saliva can enter the mix, creating unique ways to experience food. When we come to the table, we don't perceive the food flavor or the taste of food equally, Duffy said. Some people live in a pastel food world versus others who might live in a more vibrant neon food world. It could explain some of the differences in our food preference. While there are more than 25 different taste receptors in our mouth, one in particular has been highly researched. The TAS2R38, which has two variants called AVI and PAV. About 50% of us inherit one of each, and while we can taste bitter and sweet, we are not especially sensitive to bitter foods. Another 25% of us are called non-tasters because we received two copies of AVI. Non-tasters aren't at all sensitive to bitterness. In fact, food might actually be perceived as a bit sweeter. The last 25% of us have two copies of PAV, which creates the extreme sensitivity to the bitterness some plants develop to keep animals from eating them. Developing a less bitter veggie. When it comes to bitterness in the veggie family, the worst offenders tend to be cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, kale, bok choy, arugula, watercress, collards, and cauliflower. That's too bad because they are also full of fiber, low in calories, and are nutrient powerhouses. They're packed with vitamins A and C, and what's called phytonutrients, which are compounds that may help to lower inflammation. Rejecting cruciferous or any type of vegetable is a problem for the growing waistline and health of America. As we age as a population, vegetables are very important for helping us maintain our weight, providing all those wonderful nutrients to help us maintain our immune system and lower inflammation to prevent cancer, heart disease, and more, Duffy said. Food scientists are trying to develop ways to reduce the bitterness in veggies, in the hopes we can keep another generation of super tasters from rejecting vegetables. There's been some success. In fact, the Brussels sprouts we eat today are much sweeter than those our parents or grandparents ate. 
Dutch growers in the 90s searched their seed archives for older, less bitter varieties, then cross-pollinated them with today's higher yielding varieties. People who already reject vegetables might try to use various cooking methods that can mask the bitter taste. Just because somebody carries the two copies of the bitter gene doesn't mean that they can't enjoy vegetables, Duffy said. Cooking techniques such as adding a little fat, a little bit of sweetness, strong flavors like garlic, or roasting them in an oven, which brings out natural sweetness, can all enhance the overall flavor or taste of the vegetable and block the bitterness. Super tasters and health. Your genetics affect the way you taste, and taste is an important factor in food choice, said Jennifer L. Smith, PhD RN, study author and postdoctoral fellow in cardiovascular science at the University of Kentucky School of Medicine in Lexington. In a statement, you have to consider how things taste if you really want your patient to follow nutrition guidelines. Moving forward, Smith said researchers hope to use genetic information to pinpoint which vegetable these people may better tolerate, as well as which spices appeal to super tasters so we can make it easier for them to eat more vegetables. Now, vegetables are important for health, with research showing higher intakes are associated with lower risk of weight gain, heart disease, some cancers, type 2 diabetes, and age-related health decline. Researchers examining links between super tasters and mechanisms that regulate body weight have found complex interactions exist between genetic factors related to taste, food habits, energy metabolism, and the environment, which then influences BMI. Other studies have shown super tasters eat less vegetables overall and non-tasters eat the most. The bottom line is, whether you are a super taster, non-taster, or in between, everyone needs to eat more vegetables. How to trick your taste buds and into loving vegetables. The good news is being around people who eat lots of vegetables or having parents who eat a lot of vegetables is associated with higher intakes. If you are in charge of trying to get others or yourself to eat more veggies, try these strategies. Cooking and food preparation methods can help mask the bitter taste or reduce the sulfur smell. Hide the bitter taste of broccoli and cauliflower by serving them with cheese sauce. Stir one heaped spoonful of corn flour into a half a cup of milk. Place in a small saucepan on low heat. When almost to a boil, drop in a slice of cheese and stir until thick. Neutralize the taste with condiments. Black pepper contains pepperine, a pungent substance that acts as a decoy to bitter taste by stimulating the perception of heat. You can get the same effect with chili or other hot spices. All herbs, spices, and flavors, including basil, coriander, garlic, ginger, lemon juice, or salt, help override bitter taste buds receptors by stimulating other taste receptors, such as a savory, salty, or sour taste. Stir fry chopped onion with garlic, add an herb or spice of your choice, then roughly chop vegetables and cook till still a bit crunchy. Reduce the sulfur smell by cooking for as short a time as possible, like microwaving. If you do boil them, use a large saucepan and have the water boiling before you drop them in. This helps reduce the release of the gas. Increase your intake of vegetables that are not as bitter. Try beans, beetroot, carrots, corn, eggplant, lettuce, onion, peas, pumpkin, and sweet potato. When it comes down to it, exposure is everything. Whether you're trying to get somebody to like a particular vegetable or are simply trying to expand your own eating habits. 10 to 15 tries are often what it takes to really determine whether you like a certain food or not. As for your kids, do avoid extreme associations. Food should not be used as a reward or a punishment. If vegetables are offered alone before other food is put out, hungry kids tend to be more willing to eat them. While some gentle, firm pressure on kids to eat vegetables might be acceptable, it's best to avoid nagging. Most of all, if kids often see you or others eating and loving vegetables, they will not be provided with much reason to form a negative association.